Hello, welcome to Miniature Isles, my name is Stuart, and welcome to a painting tutorial for Blood Red Skies by Warlock Games. This is a, a, a new game I picked up really to um, sort of scratch a little itch I had to play a bit of World War II air combat. Not sure how big I'm going to get into the game, but it looks pretty fun. Um, and I thought, why not do a couple of painting tutorials for the miniatures I've picked up? Um, so I'm going to start with, in this video, a Major Smith BF109E, and then coming up soon there will be the Mark II Spitfire as well. So as I said, I've, I've only recently got into the game, and uh, I did a little sort of first look um, at the boxes that I picked up and my thoughts on the initial things. So if you are um, unaware of the game or, or, or don't know much about it yourself, um, take a little look at that video. I'll pop a little link in now. The plan is to paint these very, very quickly um, to get them on the table. I've got lots and lots of projects on. Um, these are very, very small scale planes at 1 to 200 scale. I just want to make them look cool on the table and, and move on fairly quickly. So this is going to be a pretty straightforward painting tutorial. However, I am using an airbrush um, and not all of you may have an airbrush, but I'll talk a little bit about alternatives that you may use for the airbrush stages. Anyway, I've started the model primed black and we'll take it from there. Now, the first colour I'm using is Vallejo model colour, light green. Um, this is going to be for the base of the plane. And now, Vallejo do an air range um, that matches um, Spitfires and Luftwaffe and things. Um, so these aren't the official, in inverted commas, colours um, that they have they've recommended for these planes. But I did a little bit of research online and I wanted to try and get something that closely approximated the colours I've seen on the images using the, the massive collection of paints that I already own. Now, I've deliberately gone over the nose a little bit here, and that's just because I want to paint some yellow over afterwards, and it'll go over easier over this, this paint rather than over the black. As I said, I'm trying to save time here, so rather than painting multiple layers of yellow, um, this will speed things up no end. Next up, a bit of contrast, because it goes over the, the lighter colours very, very well. I'm using contrast and Nasdrag yellow. If you don't have contrast paint, um, any any sort of mid-tone yellow will be fine for this. I am going to highlight this slightly afterwards, but that's pretty much the only colour I highlight on the whole plane. And it being a contrast, it does run into the, the panel lines and markings a little bit, which shows up a little bit of the detail. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Layer Phalanx Yellow and I'm going to dry brush this on the tip and this is the highlight for that colour. Now the reason I'm dry brushing and doing this now is means I can be as messy as I want and I don't need to worry about it getting on any of the colours on the plane. Obviously a tiny bit of care is needed on the bottom where I already have that light green. I'm going to be doing quite a bit of masking as a way of actually speeding up the paint job. It means I don't need to be as careful. And I want to cover and protect that yellow that I've just painted. Um, so the easiest way of doing it is using some masking tape. Uh, but I will be using some liquid mask later in the, in the process as well. But for this part, because I want nice straight lines, I'm doing the nose with this masking tape. So a little bit around the whole nose and pinch the end. And then I'll cut some smaller pits to go in at the angles which go up towards the cockpit. Next up, I'm grabbing that liquid mask I mentioned. Uh, I like the Vallejo stuff. You can buy it in big pots like this. I use it for quite a lot for work, so I get through it. Um, and rather than using a paintbrush, um, which you have basically have to throw away at the end because it's very, very hard to get this stuff out, it dries fairly quickly, I actually use rubber clay shapers. Um, you get them in lots of different shapes, so I tend to go for something that's fairly pointed at the end rather than flat-ended. Um, dip it in and paint it on using those. And then at the end of it, it dries and you literally just peel it off as you will with the model later on. So now that I've masked off the nose and covered the bottom of the plane because I was worried about some overspray, I'm going to use some blue grey for model colour as well for the, the lighter grey on the top. There is a bit of a two-tone camo effect on this plane. I've gone with the lighter colour first because it's much easier to put the darker over the top rather than vice versa. Now, if you're not using the airbrush and you're painting all of this by hand, you won't have needed to mask at all. You'd have painted a flat colour on the bottom, flat colour on the top, and picked out the nose with your hairy brush. Now, 
Now for that camo. So what I'm actually going to use liquid mask for this is a bit of an experiment, but as you'll see later in the video, it comes out quite well. So what you've got to remember with liquid mask is what you're painting on is what's going to be left. So I used some reference uh, pictures and painted on some markings that, that looked fairly close to the markings on the camo. And I'm, as I said, I want to leave um, what's underneath this. So I'm, I'm aiming for what were the, the lighter gray areas. Now, once that liquid mask is dry, I'm going to airbrush on German grey for model colour all over the top half of the plane. And when we remove the mask, it will leave the lighter grey areas. Now, if you're using regular painting methods, non-airbrush, I would recommend sponging on this colour and you will achieve a, a similar effect to the, the, the camo. Now for the fun bit, which is peeling everything off. The masking tape usually peels off fairly easily. You can gently pry it away with the edge of a sharp modeling knife. So it's quite hard to film this because the plane is so small. Uh, for the masking, um, liquid mask, it just rubs off. Now, once you've removed a bit, you get a ball. Um, and that ball is very good at removing other bits. So you can see me there with a ball of masking, just rubbing it over the surface of the plane and taking away all the areas that the liquid mask is. And that's the, the final effect just from the masking, but we'll go and add the finishing touches to really make the plane look cool. Now I'm using Game Air Black from Vallejo. Um, I'm going to paint this with a, with a regular brush here. It's a nice thin black. It goes on really, really easily with a, with a regular brush. You don't have to use it through the airbrush. I just find it gives me more control. And I'm just painting in the window panels on the cockpit. Um, you can do these in lots of different ways. Some people do them as if they're clear, so I paint them as sort of blue. Um, I like to paint them as if the, sh the sun was shining directly at them, which tends to make windows look dark. Um, and as I'm trying to do this with speed and I don't want to have to highlight each individual window panel, um, this is a really good way of doing it. I'm also going to use the same black to pick out the, the exhaust of the engine and the tyres on the undercarriage. Um, while they're retracted, you can still see sort of half tyres on the bottoms of the wings. Now for some model colour off-white and all I'm doing there is freshening up and painting the nose of the aircraft. After this I apply a gloss varnish through the airbrush for the entire model. Now this is needed I believe in order to get your decals to fit really really well and go on very smoothly I know you can get away with it without I'm not going to show you the process of putting the decals on here but I have already done a video on uh, how to apply decals so I'll pop a little link in now if you wish to go and watch that now after the decals have fully dried I gave it another gloss varnish just to seal in those decals and protect them and also prepare the plane for the next stage which is oil washes now I'm using a ready mixed oil wash from Soilworks, which is scale 75. And I'm using grease, it's one of my favorite colors. Um, you can mix these yourself as well by buying burnt and raw rumber. They're probably the two most used colors and mixing with artist white spirit and you can change them, the, the thickness of them. But if you're new to oil washes and you want something simple, these are just perfect. Now, rather than panel lining um, or, or trying to get in just in certain areas on such small models, I end up just slapping it over the whole miniature. Now the benefit from doing this is it's very easy to wipe off, that's the benefit of the oils. If you did this with something like um, an Agrax Earthshade or something like that, it would pull and then dry, leaving messy tide marks and things all over it, so you have to take a lot more care. With this being oils, I know that I could take it pretty much all back off if I wanted to. And now is that cleanup process. So using artist white spirit, you don't want to use standard white spirit. It's a bit harsh and it smells um, very, very, very bad. And you'll have unhappy cohabitants of your wherever you live if you use that stuff. But using clean artist white spirit on an old brush, I dip the brush in and I'm removing the oil wash that I put on before. Now I'm doing that in streaks to show the direction of travel as dirt and things may have built up on the aircraft as it's flying um, that's the direction the plane's going in so the dirt would potentially run a certain way um, there's all kinds of methods and things you can do with that but uh, just just keep repeating this slowly taking it away and you literally could remove it all if you wanted to if you put enough stuff on the miniature 
And once you're happy with the amount of oil wash that you've removed, just let it dry thoroughly. Um, you can speed it up with a hairdryer or something, but oils can take um, 24 hours or even longer sometimes to fully, fully set on a miniature. So I cheated with a hairdryer with these. Just be careful, obviously, with plastic miniatures. If you heat them with a, with a hairdryer, they can go out of shape. So just keep checking you're not making the miniature too hot. Now, once those oils have dried, I just want to pick out the edges a little bit, and I'm using Game Air Silver. And I'm very gently doing a little bit of dry brushing along the, 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 the sort of leading edges of some of the, the wings and on the tops of the canopy and stuff. Just gives it a little bit more definition without the need for sort of edge highlighting and things like that. So again, speeding the process up, but also makes it a little bit more battle-torn and worn. And there you have it. It's that simple. It's a very, very simple uh, paint job for a pretty simple model. Um, some people were saying it's not simple because you've used an airbrush and, and et cetera, et cetera. But you could easily hand paint the stages I did with an airbrush and, and use the sponging for the camo, as I said. Still gloss varnish and do all of the rest of the, the effects and it would look very, very similar because I've not done any, any shading with the airbrush and things at all. Aside from drying times, you could easily paint a, a sort of squadron or a, a, a group of six planes um, over, a, over a long evening, um, depending on how quickly you paint. And if you're batch painting large numbers, you can get through it in, in no time at all. I'm more than happy with the result for, for, for what I want to achieve in terms of getting these miniatures painted and, and, and ready for gaming fairly quickly. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on the miniatures and, and how you go about painting your own planes if you've done some already. If you are new to the channel, please do check out the other videos. There's loads of painting tutorials for different historical periods, lots of smaller scale stuff, um, epic battles, Napoleonics, American Civil War, there's some Middle Earth stuff on there as well. So have it, check it out and have a look. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider giving us a like. It really helps get the video seen by others and lets me know that I'm not doing a bad job. Um, if you're new to the channel and, and, and like what you see on there, also consider subscribing. It definitely um, helps the channel grow. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.